all marauders and YouTubers. Welcome back to another time video. Today's fly is gonna solve a problem that all of us have, and I'll tell you about it at the end of the video. But first, let's get to the fly and tie. And please, don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment on this video. Maybe tell us a fly you'd like to see us cover, or just leave a comment and tell us that we're doing a bad job, good job, whatever. But that we love comments and likes, and please subscribe. Now, let's get to the voice. And you want to make sure you debarb it for makes catch and release a lot easier. And if you get one in your finger, it makes it removing from your finger a lot easier. You start by putting on white thread onto a size 12 3x long dry fly hook. Now to put, place your wing on almost all the flies you tie, you're going to go halfway down the shank and then back up half that distance and that's where you're going to tie your wing in. And now let's show you how we make these wings right here. Now what you're going to do is you're going to unwrap three wraps of this thread. You're going to use three pieces of it. So you just unwrap it and then uh, cut it. So you have three sections. I cut it before, sorry. To go back, cut a section off. But you unwrap it so you have three sections. And if you don't have them in these little wrap sections, they're about three inches. Three strands are about three inches long. Now you're gonna take that material you just, I showed you how to get, and you're gonna lay it on top, and you're gonna figure eight it. Go over, figure eight it. And uh, let me know when you leave in the comments if you think I should make a course on detailing more how to make wings and body material, make my own separate courses. If you think to be interested in that, leave a comment below. You figure eight it, then you go around the base, and then you have your wings standed up. Now you're gonna go grab a hold of them wings, hold up on them, and cut them to the same length as the shank of the hook. Now I know you're using the 3X and the wings are a little long, doesn't matter. This is how I exactly I tied these flies. And this is where you're gonna want them. So you just cut them at length of the shank of the hook.
Now you want to run your thread back to where you're going to tie in your tail. All the way back to where the bend of the hook is. Now let's get ready to show you how you get the tail ready to tie in. We're going to use deer tail. Let's get right to that. So we're here to show you how to do the tail. Got a deer tail. Tail. If you got to include this fly because it has deer tail in it, and some of you people have already went out and shot your deer. I've not been to the woods yet. So you're gonna take a clump of the deer tail. Let's see. Peel it back. Like so. And you're gonna take and you pull the long ones out, and you're gonna grab it by the tips, just pull it out. Pull the other stuff out, throw it away. And that should give you a nice tail to tie in when you fly. Now we're gonna take the thread or tying thread back to the tail to get ready to tie in dubbing, but we're gonna put a couple just two wraps underneath the tail to make it stick up a little bit. I like how they ride in the water, the cooler. And they seem to work the same whether you do the tail or not. But it's an option if you want it. And now we're going to get the tie dubbing it. We're going to use white ice dubbing, as you can see, as I showed you, and we're going to make this the body bulky. More, a little more bulky than a regular mayfly. Now you're going to tie it in a grizzly hackle and a white hackle, light ginger, white, and uh, no need to measure the hackle sizes. We don't care what the hackle size is. I mean, you don't want them really teeny so that it looks ridiculous, but you don't have to be perfect. They don't have to be the right length, and they don't have to look perfect. You kind of want them scraggly. I noticed the scragglier kind of the the fly looks the more it works I don't know why and we're going to tell you don't forget how this is going to solve some of your problems Now when wrapping the grizzly hackle, you only like two times behind the wing and maybe once in front of the wing. But when wrapping the white hackle, you want to wrap like four times behind the wing and twice in front of the wing. And you want to tie them off, pull all your hair back, get it out of the way, form a head, finish it twice.
Or heads or whip finish it twice. Head cement if you want. And that's it. Let's take a closer look at this cool fly. you like that fly and there's a couple reasons why you want that one in your box now the other day I was out on Penn's Creek the other day I was out on Penn's Creek and uh, a fish had rose and right like beside me so I kind of like I did with the lat on one of the other videos before I just moved my strike indicator of overtake the nymph and when my strike indicator went above the fish the fish came up and almost swallowed my strike indicator well if this happens to you I suggest you just tie on one of these flies take your strike indicator off tie one of these flies at the end of your rod and you can tie a dropper back on and use one of these as your strike indicator and when the fish comes up, they'll just grab that fly, and you'll catch a big fish. I've caught a couple big ones this way. They tried swallowing my strike indicator. It works in the spring, too. Some of the dumb big stockies will try and eat your strike indicator, I think. They think it's power bait. I don't know what it is, but it really works as a dropper. Um, a lot of times, if I'm going for ones that I think are really going to try and take a dry, I'll go with a... This is basically a white wolof. I'll use a gray wolof in the spring. And then a royal wolf during when the uh, the terrestrials start coming out. But this white wolf is deadly all year long. You can use it as a dropper set up, and they'll take that white big bulk of fly. Uh, not always sure why they do it. I have my theory, and my theory on the reason why they take these in the fall is if you've seen them big white moths that come out in about the middle of summer. They're everywhere. I mean, I've seen them along creeks, hundreds of them along creeks already. And then when they fall in the water, there's so much protein and there's such a bulky f source of food that the fish do not want to give them up. So that when this white straight egg here falls in, they think it's another one of these huge moss, which they got a lot of protein off last time, so they want to attack it and they hit it, and they think it's a moth. That's... What I, my theory is, I'm not sure exactly what the fish think. I mean, I don't know how you would ever know how what the fish really think. But that's my theory is they attack that for that white strike indicator. And it's only white. I never had them try and swallow an orange strike indicator or a pink indicator or any other. I don't use pink. I use whites. Um, once in a while I use an orange. She uses all the pinks. Um, I won't go through the difference of strike indicator color in a future video uh, but uh, this is why you have to have this fly in your box and when that happened I didn't have any of these tied I didn't tie any last year and I ran out and uh, it's like wow I couldn't believe I didn't have one because I always have these in my box always it's a must have in my box make it a must have in yours and if you ever see one of these fish and I know all of you have had experienced this if you fish a lot you've experienced this that they have a fish trying to eat your strike indicators you pull out one of these flies and put it on the end and watch if that fish don't swallow your big old white fly. I've seen them do it. And uh, even if they just come up and look at your strike indicator and go back down, they're looking at a white fly. So tie one of these on and a lot of times I don't catch that big fish that tries. And usually it's not a small fish that tries to swallow my strike indicator. It's a big old boy that tries to swallow it. And I've caught some big fish by doing this technique. And uh, like I said, even even now, the other day, they were off after the slate drakes. You tie one of these big flies on, and they might take it for a slate drake. Drop a little, about a foot off the bottom of that. Drop a, a, some kind of nymph off of that. Sometimes they'll come up to look at the white fly to see if it's what it, they want. They don't see it. 
they get too, they get close, see the nymph, and take the nymph before they even get to that dry. So, uh, yeah, these are killer for dropper rigs. They're good fish dry too. And like I said, when the green drakes and the drakes come off, some of the drakes these will their bellows are a light color, and a lot of times they'll take these for them. So make sure you have them in your box, and next time you uh, fish trout swallows your strike indicator, just say, hey, throw this fly on and bam, you got yourself a big old fish. And that's what we're here to do is catch more fish, and not catch fishermen. So thank you for watching this video. I hope you like this fly. It's basically a white woolf with uh, my changes to it, and all the changes I made seem to be working work a lot better than the first original and I've been have I had these in my box for 20 years it was one of them flies I would not go to the creek without making sure I had them in my box and when I did see what happens I missed out on a big and it was a big old brown tried swallowing my straight kind of big massive brown probably would have had him and pictures of him and videos for you and explained the whole situation but so we had to bring this fly to you immediately so you get it in your box so this error happens to your set. So, like always, thank you for watching our videos. Keep your lines wet. All the trees are going to give them fish a sore lip. And I'll tell you what, make sure you be creative. Create your own fly today. And create one that works. Do your research and come up with your own. Don't always stick to patterns. Sometimes the patterns aren't the best thing to have on the water. Like, subscribe. Make sure you subscribe and comment on this video. Thank you. You all have a good day.